Hello and welcome to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast. Our podcast series features interviews and discussions on all issues relating to quality early learning and care with a range of speakers who are leaders in the areas that matter to Early Childhood Ireland members. I'm Maura Corbett and I work with Early Childhood Ireland and you're welcome to season two. So in this, the third episode of our series reflecting on how we can best support very young children I'm delighted to be joined by Colette O'Donovan, who will discuss effective and supportive interactions for children under three. Colette is the licensed Marta Mayo supervisor in Ireland since 1995, and she's a specialist in the training and application of the Marta Mayo supportive interaction method. Colette is passionate about supporting people to recognise and build on their supportive interaction skills that gift children and adults in everyday moments of interaction, which supports their development and well-being. So, Colette, you're really welcome. Thank you, Maura, and thank you for the invitation. I'm delighted to be here. So, Colette, can you take us through the developmental supportive interaction ideas through the lens of Marta Mayo? Yes, yeah. So, developmental supportive interaction is interaction that the adult uses in daily life moments that supports social, emotional and communication development of the child. And these interactions people use every day, more often than not, without being aware of it and without being aware of the effect that it has for a child's development. So I suppose the Marta Mayo Method is a video-based supportive interaction program where the developmental interactions are derived from the detailed observations that Marie Arts, who's the founder of Marta Mayo, has studied between parents and children over the last 40 years. So Marta Mayo makes visible the opportunities that are there in everyday life moments to give what Maria calls a golden gift to children that they will benefit from for their entire life. So I suppose today, while I'm not using video, I hope that from this chat that early years educators will recognise and become aware of their own interactions in daily life moments and their effect in supporting the development of the children that they care for. So early years educators, as we know, are very important people in the life of each individual child because they are the people on the work floor in direct contact with the child and are best positioned to offer developmental support and interaction in daily moments. And many of the developmental theories that early years educators have studied outline the different developmental steps for babies and children and when approximately the child reaches these milestones. And what Martin Mayo information adds is that it gives us the how part of child development, how in ordinary everyday moments of interaction, we can concretely support social and emotional developmental needs of children, which is fundamental in forming the foundation for all other areas of their development. Now, Maria Arts talks about all children being born with a gold mine. And this internal gold mine refers to the child's unique interests their talents and potential for development. And this development potential is developed with the help of adults who recognize the initiatives of the child and support them in a developmentally appropriate way. So supporting initiatives opens the child's own energy stream at their pace and guides development. And more, you know, nature is so generous that it gives us numerous opportunities in daily life to gift children in interaction moments. So how does this happen? So from the moment the child arrives in the morning to the creche or the earlier setting, the greeting can be done by giving a good face, using good body language and good tones. And this sets positive atmosphere. This sets the expectation of the day. The message the child gets from the educator is that I am happy to see you. I enjoy being with you. And this helps the child to feel good about themselves. And good faces and tones offer reassurance to the child that things are okay. And in turn, this builds their self-confidence. And it's always good to remember that ever before we speak, the first thing the child sees is our face. And not only the child, but also the parent. And this is why creating a positive atmosphere from the start is important. And then maintaining this atmosphere in moments throughout the day. Now, we know in these kind of unprecedented times that some educators may be wearing face masks. So it's even more important then to put emphasis on tone, on nods, on saying yes, 
and giving smiles because this also shows in our eyes. And then for a child who may be a little anxious or upset, they need extra good faces and positive nods from the educator to help them get a sense that I'm doing okay. And this is important again, because sometimes what happens is that the adult goes closer only when the child is upset and the child can get the message, I must do this to be seen or to have you close with me. So by offering a good face and a positive nod to the child in the moments where they are managing, this gives the message that I see you now also when you're managing and by building this up, the child manages better and has a different expectation. Now, of course, Maura, it's not only um, a positive atmosphere that's needed in relation to developmental supportive interaction. There's also the specific interaction uh, that needs to happen in a positive atmosphere. And Kelis, uh, what, what would you feel the key strands are to support um, uh, developmental supportive interactions? Well, um, there are two uh, kind of main strands to the cycle of supportive interaction. And they are following and positive leading. So first I'll say a little bit about following because that's really important. And um, following is connected to supporting the child's initiatives. And when I talk about initiatives, I'm really talking about the spontaneous ideas that the child has. Um, and they come at action level. So what the child is doing, um, the verbal level, what the child is saying, or the sound the child makes, and at the emotional level, what the child is feeling. And this is done, I suppose, following is really important in relation to free situations with the child. And the supportive in interaction that's required from the adult is attentive waiting, following and naming. So attentive waiting in free situations gives the child space to take their own initiative. And sometimes people can be a little bit too busy with their own ideas in these moments. Um, and they start to tell the child maybe what to do with the block that they have in their hand or what to do with the ball and say things like, you can put it here or you can roll it to me. But in actual fact, what the child needs is some space to do it themselves. So attentive waiting gives space to the child to take the initiative at their level, at their point of interest, and then following by looking, the educator learns to see the initiative and learns to know what the child is interested in. And this is how they get to know the child's world. So this is very much about tuning in to what's actually happening for the child. And then by naming, well, this is putting words to the action of the child so that the child feels seen and they get the message that they have a good idea. And this stimulates other good ideas and builds connection. So following a child often enough, connect to their own ideas, builds connection and a good relationship with the child. And this is really something that's exactly what's needed in interaction moments. When, for example, a new child joins, how to get to know the child is through following the child's initiatives. Um, and we also know now that from our brain research, it also shows that when a child is interested in something, they are most open. And this we call a growing moment. Uh, because, for example, like learning language, that is why it is important to give words connected to the action with good tones. So when the child rolls the ball, they hear you are rolling the ball. This gives explicit words connected to their action. And then it helps the child to register what they are doing so that later in their development, they have words to express their own ideas and give social invitations. So the more the child can register, so the more often we can put words connected to their initiatives, like at the action or the feeling level, when we see the child gives a smile, you enjoy, and they help, that helps the child to register. And the more registration that can happen for the child, that's how they develop their regulation. So when the child has the space then to develop their own initiative, they also learn to trust their own ideas. And this is opening the opening of the child's own energy stream. And this builds a good self picture and it builds self confidence. So the child then develops a good internal structure. So essentially that, that's all that the child really develops around connected to following the initiatives is their own good internal structure. And often 
I use the analogy of the child coming to the earlier setting with their backpack, which we regularly see them doing anyway. But this backpack, I talk about the backpack of self-esteem. And what early years educators can do is that there are so many moments in the day that in these free situations, they fill the backpack with self-esteem. Um, so waiting uh, and doing it at the right pace, connect to the individual child, and then that following uh, by looking and then giving the words. So they are really the steps to support the initiatives. So then the other part of the cycle is around positive leading. And this happens in structured situations. So this is really where the child must learn to do what must be done. So essentially positive leading is required in daily situations where there is a task to be done and the child needs to follow. But as well as following, they must also be part of the process. So for example, like in daily routines, eating time, washing hands, nappy times, all those kinds of situations. Sometimes in these situations, what can happen is that people ask too many questions to the child and say, would you like to come now? Do you want to take off, all your, take off your coat? Uh, but if it's a situation where it needs to happen, then it's much better to tell. So tell the child what's going to happen. And in this way, they learn behavior models. And behavior models, these are skills they need for school. So it's not about what I want, but it's about what I need to do. And that all comes in the positive leading. Uh, so telling the child before an action moment, how you want to have it. So for example, you can sit here and that helps the child to follow. So educators take more of the initiatives and positive leading moments as children require structure, predictability and information on what they can do or what is expected of them. So in this way, the child learns to know the world around them. They develop trust and security in their environment. They learn how to cooperate and they learn models for a new task. So through positive leading, the child develops an external structure. Okay, so earlier I was saying through following, the child develops that internal structure. And now through positive leading, they develop the external structure. So in this way, that cycle of following and leading, they work hand in hand and having moments in the day around the following and leading. So this is how the child develops a secure internal working model of the world as described in our attachment theories. Now, it's also important for a child who comes to the new situation. How do they learn to know? We know that by following, the educators get to know the child and their world. But by putting words on our own actions, the child gets to know the world around them. What's happening now? So they learn to know their environment. And again, so that cycle works in many different situations to offer extra support in, in many moments. So in positive leading moments, for example, like um, a nappy change, the first thing is to make a connection with the baby by coming close, 20 centimetre distance. And uh, this gives a focus. It gives an orientation. And then using the child's name, OK, the child knows you're with them. Then put words to your own actions before doing the action. And in this way, the child learns to know what's happening. Now, we know, of course, with a small baby, it's not that they understand. Um, but as the child begins to develop, they know from the tone and because they've been in that process of someone leading and guiding them, then they're easily able to follow. And then within that process of, um, in the action moment of naming what's happening, there also there needs to be a connection moment and that keeps the baby with the person. And working through the nappy change, whatever it is, and then when it comes to the end, putting a clear end. Now you are finished. And this is what I mean by learning behavior models, where there's a beginning, a middle, and an ending. So as the child gets older, then telling the child what they can do supports the child to learn the next step. And it sets up a cooperation model. Um, and a cooperation model is very much about telling the child where the educator tells the child what they can do. But what's very important then is to wait and give the child time to process what they have to do and wait for the child to manage. And if the child needs extra support, then renaming it for them. And then when the child manages to confirm, and that's always important because sometimes we hear people say a lot of good boy and good girl, but what we talk about is giving concrete confirmation. So the child explicitly hears what they have managed. 
So, for example, if the child needs to put something in the bin and the leader says, you can put the paper in the bin and then they wait and they see the child does it, then to say, that's it, you put the paper in the bin. OK, so can you imagine the child takes in explicitly what they have done um, and it gives that concrete confirmation. And in that way, we help the child to build up a nuanced picture about themselves of things I manage well. Um, so, again, using the child's name at the beginning of sentences in leading moments also helps the child to be with us in the moment. And what we know in interaction is that more or once is not enough for this to happen. It is the repetition of the cycle of interaction, of following and leading, that make it supportive to the child's development in daily moments. And in general, good enough support in daily life situations is when seven out of 10 times there is a positive atmosphere and a balance in daily interactions between following moments and leading moments. I think the, you know those ideas of, of tuning in, slowing it down, naming the child's actions, they're all so important, as you say, for giving the, the child that good feeling about themselves. Um, video can can help to, to do this. So in the couple of minutes that we that we have left, can you give some simple tips on um, using video to support educators in in practice? Um, yeah. how to do that yeah okay so I suppose Maura uh, video is such a useful tool and um, I suppose from a Martin Merrifield's perspective the use of the video for early age educators is, is twofold because it makes the supportive interaction that already naturally occur between the child and educator visible and as well as identifying in a clear and understandable way supports that are required to help a child develop in a good way you know in life everyday moments, it's difficult to see all the tiny moments of interaction that occur in real time. Um, but with, with uh, video interaction analysis, <clears throat> this helps to slow life down. And with the slowing uh, down, I suppose, of life using video, uh, people can reflect, they can see what they do. Um, and with video interaction analysis, what we can really see is who is the child? What do they have? What do they bring with them? What skills do they have? What level is their are their initiatives? And what do they still need to develop? And then, uh, I suppose in March, May, we, we also use developmental checklists to assist this. And also then using video interaction analysis identifies for the early years educator their own supportive interaction skills and opportunities that are there to build on these connected to the needs of the child. And in my experience, using video in training with early years educators ensures good quality interactions for the child, but it also builds confidence of the educator in their own practice. And I would find over the years that so many educators would have said after we going through a, a very short clip of their film would say, I didn't know I did that when I was with the child. And I also didn't realize the lovely face the child is giving back to me. So tomorrow I can look for it. And that's the beauty of video. Um, and I suppose we also use three W's, the advice system, which is looking to see when does the child need support and what kind of support does the child need? And then how does that support development? And I know I've done some work with some of your colleagues on um, inspiring interactions, where if people would like to follow that, it's on the first five CPD on the um, Department of Children and Youth Affairs um, website. And there they are using some of the clips, some of the Martin Mayer colleague trainers in early childhood Ireland are using some of the clips to um, identify with film all of the things now that I've been talking about. But I do know more that gifting children with developmental supportive interaction in daily moments helps them to build self-confidence and develop a good self-picture. And in that way, we can really help them to be strong and ready for the world of tomorrow. Elias, thank you so much for, for that. You've given us loads of food for thought around um, how those caring, tuned in, slow, loving um, interactions support young children's well-being, learning and, and development. And we will put the, the link up to those CPD pieces um, when we're when we're posting this this podcast. So Colette, uh, thanks again. And thank you for listening to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast. If you've enjoyed the podcast, uh, please tell your friends and colleagues and hope you'll join us next time. And in the meantime, keep an eye on our website and social media channels.